Information Systems Technical Support. This is Greg. Can I have your employee ID, please? Every day, about 30, 40, 50, sometimes as much as 60 times, I would say that exact same opening phrase. I worked on a help desk as a technical support agent servicing tier one business applications for an enterprise company. I would go home at the end of that shift about four out of five times in a week with a headache. Don't get me wrong, I was grateful for having my first job on an IT help desk, but I knew very quickly this is not a job that I wanted to keep long term because help desk can be very stressful, your scope of impact can be very limited, and if you're not careful, help desk can be a dead end job in your career. Most people I talk to, they don't wanna be on the help desk long term either. Maybe you're different, but I'm guessing because you're watching this video, you're trying to figure out how you can get from the IT help desk to cloud engineer. Now, if you're new here, I'm Greg, creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud. And on this YouTube channel, every week, I release a video to help you navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe right now. You don't have time to waste making mistakes when you can learn from somebody that's already gone down the road you're trying to get down. Now, congratulations for you because you've already made it to an IT help desk. But what you have to do now is what I call a self-assessment. Where are you in your journey? Because there's different levels of help desk. There's tier one, tier two, and tier three. Now this video is geared more towards that tier one type help desk. So what skills are you bringing into the table? Everybody's journey is different. So obviously the more skills you're bringing to the table, your journey to get the cloud engineer is gonna be a little bit more efficient versus if you have limited to no technical skills. And this would be on an IT help desk where you're reading from scripts and you're really relying heavily on a knowledge base to work you through troubleshooting a problem. Similar to like if you call up your local internet service provider and the first thing you say is restart your cable modem, but you really don't know the background for why you should do that. Only reason you know is because you read that in a knowledge base in a script. Your road's gonna be a little bit steeper, but don't worry, we're gonna get you through it. When I was on the help desk, I felt like the scope of what I could do was very limited. I could only do as much as I had access to do and as much as that help desk that I worked with, they were contracted to provide to the customers. I knew if I wanted to get out of that IT help desk and transition on to something better, I had to figure out what I needed to do. So I focused on my first area, which was infrastructure. I made it a big part to learn about computers and networking, database, and storage to start. Now, there's a few certifications that you could focus on. And for me, it's less about you going out here and getting these certifications. And it's more so just being able to have this level of knowledge. I'm not stopping you from going out here and getting this full on certification. By all means, go for it. But like at the very least, read through these books and know the equivalent knowledge so you can build on top of that. Now, if you're on the help desk, you might already have the CompTIA A+. If you do, this is great. For those of you that might not know, CompTIA A+, is a vendor neutral certification that's gonna focus on computers and operating systems, a little bit about virtualization and cloud security. It touches on a lot of the IT fundamentals. Not only is this helpful for your current help desk job, but this is gonna give you fundamentals that you can take into your role as a cloud engineer, because guess what? They're called fundamentals for a reason because they never really go away. You can build on top of these to learn more advanced skills. Even though CompTIA A+, has a little bit on virtualization and networking, your problems that you're solving are more limited to the computer or the host system. When you get into cloud, you're gonna be building architectures that are distributed. So you're not just gonna be dealing with one or two computers, you could be dealing with dozens or maybe even hundreds of servers that are connecting and talking and you have to be able to understand best practices. So another certification that I recommend you take a look at is the CompTIA Network Plus. One of my favorite things I learned in the CompTIA Network Plus was the OSI seven layer model which to this day is still gonna benefit you as a cloud engineer. And I also like the CompTIA Network Plus because it's gonna help you think well beyond just a host computer and start thinking about how multiple computers talk, going through protocols like TCP, IP, firewalls, 
routing and switching, and it really builds nicely on top of that CompTIA level A plus knowledge. The third fundamental IT certification that I wanted to cover is CompTIA Security Plus. You can't do anything in the cloud without understanding security. So when you bring that deep security level knowledge into your role as a cloud engineer, it's just gonna help you out big time. So let me quickly recap what we've talked about so far so we can keep track. You wanna go into your cloud engineering role having a great understanding of infrastructure and security. So for infrastructure, compute, network, database, and storage, and then of course, security. I've provided three certifications that you can take a look at. And again, you don't have to go crazy and go out here and get all these certifications, but at least go out here and grab you the corresponding book and start reading through this and studying it so you can build on top of these fundamental IT concepts. Now let's fast forward to when you've built those fundamental IT skills in infrastructure and security. Now we gotta learn some cloud skills. And the first place I would take a look at is AWS. There are two areas that I want you to focus on immediately. And the first is the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. This is a fundamental AWS certification that's gonna teach you the fundamentals of AWS. So you can take all that knowledge you built in infrastructure and security and then start pairing that up with the AWS cloud skills that you're gonna learn. Once you've cleared the AWS certified practitioner level knowledge, that's when you wanna focus on your AWS certified solutions architect associate. This certification focuses very deeply on how to build AWS well-architected solutions on AWS. Now we've gone over a ton of material. Don't get overwhelmed. Remember, you have to do your self-assessment and determine where you are. Take this one step and one day at a time. You don't need to go out here and go get everything. Figure out what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and then focus on your weaknesses first to make sure you can beef up in those areas. And please don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below and ask any questions you may have. And before you go, make sure you take a look at this video right here where I go even deeper into cloud engineering. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.